Hi, this is Wayne Hartman, and today we're going to take you on a little tour of some object-oriented best practices in Objective-C. We're going to walk you through an example application here that will show us some tips and tricks on how to better uh, do object-oriented programming better with Objective-C and follow best practices as far as information hiding is concerned and how we can improve our code quality and de decrease the amount of information we're exposing to other classes. So hopefully reduce potential coupling as well. So one thing that, that is commonly found in Objective-C classes is we have our header here and we'll load our header up with all these IB outlets, all these properties, all these things that sort of expose the internals of what's going on with our class. We may even have IB actions that are really only used internally, but we expose those to the world. Now, just to, by way of quick review, our header is sort of our public contract with those who are going to use our class. Our header describes what we're going to, what we are, or what our state is, and what our behaviors are. And sometimes we get in the habit of just dumping everything in the .h file, even though we wouldn't want anybody calling these particular actions external from our class, or we may not want people you know, messing with certain properties of our class as well. And so what we're going to do is show you how we can overcome um, this tendency to expose everything and sort of hide it in a way so that people know what our contract is just by looking at our headers and but still maintain a little bit of order in our class structure. So one of the things that's very known or very little known is a thing called class extensions. And if you've heard of categories before um, or seen what those look like, then you already know what a class extension is and you didn't even know it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our .m file and we can come in and declare a class extension to this account details view controller. And just to kind of give you an idea of what, what we're doing here, here's a little nib with you know a history segment controller and a summary and it's going to display some cells about you know an account transaction history and we have an info button and we, we don't want to expose to classes that could potentially instantiate this controller to really be concerned with all the internals of it. So this is just a visual representation of what we're working with. So coming back here, um, you already know what a category looks like and we just do a private interface and this is going to be a BP account details view controller and notice we have these little parentheses there. This is our way of uh, basically saying that this is a category, but because we're leaving these blank, we're saying this is what's called a class extension. Okay. All right, the compiler had a little heartburn there. We can, in this little interface here, we can declare both new instance variables, properties, and methods, and they will not be visible to consumers of our class. And so we can just switch over to the header here and we can just excise these out. We can cut them and paste them in here like so. And because we don't we don't want people to know what our instance variables are, we're going to just pull those out and paste them in there as well. And so what we've done is we've reduced our header down to the essence of what we want people to do with our class. We, as part of our contract, we're saying here that we're a view controller and the thing that you can set on us is an instance of a BP account. And really, as a user of our class, that's really the only thing you should be concerned about when you use this class. Now another best practice here is sometimes these headers can get very uh, bulky as far as all the properties and stuff that we use. And so we can use pragma marks to kind of section our code off uh, from people so that when as we're looking at the properties of our class, everything is kind of cordoned off and so we can quickly navigate to things inside our class. So this is a way we can we can do that. We'll just go ahead and save that. Now, now our class is in a state where people know what to expect, how we're how to use this class, and but we're also leveraging the power of properties 
um, inside our internals. So we can take this a step further, and I see this a lot with table view cells as well. There, there's a lot of information that that table view cells can convey, but our table view controllers often are are too tightly coupled to the implementation details of those cells. So here's an, an example cell. It's just a transaction history cell. And we have a couple you know, properties that we can set on it to convey information back to our users. And if we go to the header here, we can see that you know, we have labels here and, and all that fun stuff. But maybe this isn't important to our consumers. So again, we can come over here, take that, and just really excise it from the header and create a class extension again and paste that information in there so it's still still usable from our internal class perspective but again we're hiding it from people so they aren't messing around with our internals now you might be saying, well, how do we how do we set the label up and how do we get it working so that it displays the, the model object data correctly? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to create a property for our transaction history item cell so that uh, people can set that and the setter will actually worry about the details of setting the cell up. So we just need to import our model object. Okay. And now we need to create a custom setter that will allow us to uh, set the different properties of the, the labels correctly whenever someone sets the model object on the cell. All right, so we'll just step through the code here real quick. So this is a custom setter, and we're just going to do a check that if the one being passed in is the same as our instance, we're just going to return, do a no-op, doesn't matter. Um, else we're just going to come in we're going to release the existing value there then we're going to retain the one passed in and assign it to our history item IVAR then we're going to go through each of these labels and we're going to set the text in there and according to our business rules whatever they may be and that way the history item labels get set correctly whenever the model object gets set okay now we've created this nice, clean interface for people who are going to use this cell so they don't have to worry about the implementation details of how to set the cell up. That's all taken care of when we set our model object. And this is just, again, another important aspect of object-oriented programming. It can be a little tricky in Objective-C just because there are, there are no such things as public and private um, methods. And so we have to do a couple of things to kind of hide those in a way from people who may abuse our classes or use things in a way in which we're, we're not intended. So this is just a, uh, a demonstration of how, how we can use information hiding in Objective-C. So now we get these nice clean headers. People can use our, our files. They know what to expect. They know what the public API is without us having to write documentation on what that public API is because the header really kind of describes that anyway. Uh, we come into here, we can still do our IV outlet connections. You can see these little indicators here. Interface Builder is smart enough to know that this is a class extension and so you can still hook things up that way without any problems. And we can use pragma marks as a way to kind of keep a separation between our class extension and the other implementation uh, details inside our .m file. Well, this about wraps up our best practice video on doing information hiding in Objective-C. We'll catch you later.